Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. This is Ron Legrand, and welcome to the webinar today. It uh, is probably going to take somewhere around an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. I've never done this before, so I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to take because we're going to end it with questions and answers. And of course, how long we go is going to depend on you. I can tell you that today's webinar is going to be very important to you in your uh, business. If you are buying and selling houses right now, we're going to add a very interesting twist brought to me by the Iannatis, derived from an old concept that I taught, oh golly, back in the late 80s and all the way up into the um, mid-2000s, and um, I'm now bringing it back. And then, of course, that's lease options and options. And uh, What we're going to do is to combine the tools of the old times with the tools of the new times and add this interesting technique, and I promise you that if you are buying and selling houses or even looking to buy houses out there right now, you're going to love this technique for a lot of reasons that I'm going to get into here in just a minute. Before I do, let me let you meet the Iannatis. And I don't know anybody that knows more about John and Stephanie Iannati than John and Stephanie Iannati. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Ron. We Hi, appreciate Ron. it. Okay. Uh, tell them a little bit about you because, believe it or not, there are folks on this call right now who do not know you. Absolutely. We would love to do that. Um, I'll give you just a brief of myself. Um, I was an orthopedic technician for 24 years. Um, came into real estate by basically running into you, Ron, at um, a National RIA. Fell in love with real estate. And ever since we met you back in 01, have basically done what you've told us to do. In our first year, we made over a million dollars. Wow. And have never looked back since <laughs> you've been in my system for 10 years already yeah. holy yeah. crap i'm, I'm yeah. getting old fast okay yeah, i know us too so you made a million dollars in your first year are we talking a million in cash or a million in equity here no it, that was a million in cash okay and john your background is a factory worker is that not correct that's correct ron i, I actually started out as uh, when i came out of college as a policeman and then uh quickly determined I, I couldn't make any money doing that, so uh, went into the steel mill for many, many years, and uh, that's when we, as Steph said, found you in uh, 2001, and, uh, you know, the rest has been uh, history. And you guys today, what's going on today? Ten years later, what's your current business look like? Because I know you live in two different states. Yes. Um, between Pennsylvania and Florida, we actually sold our home in October up here, but we still come up. We're actually here right now um, because we have a large part of our business here. And Pennsylvania, we're basically doing um, about four to between four to six deals a month. Um, and most of it is the, using the AXE program. And in Florida, it's mostly short sales at this point in time, but we're also incorporating the AXE program because of the over leveraged properties. Yeah, so am I, which we're going to get to here shortly. Yeah. All right, so guys, I want I want you to meet the Ionatis, and I want you to know that we have real players on the phone with you right now. These are not somebody that we stuck on here to take up time. Not only are the Ionatis uh, doing uh, seven figures annually and have been for quite a while now, but they're also mentors for global publishing, and they help our students as well. And plus, at the end of this webinar, you're going to hear about an event that they and I are going to do at the end of September in Orlando, which I know you're going to be very excited about. And again, when it's over, we're going to take Q uh, Q&A. Speaking of Q&A, you should see a question button down in your, on, your, on your screen there. Please feel free to type in your questions throughout the webinar. Go ahead and type them in, and at the end, John and Stephanie are going to repeat them to me because I cannot see them from my vantage point here, so they're going to read them to me. Now, I will tell you ahead of time that a, lot, a large part of this uh, event is about answering your questions, so you might want to wait till we're well into it to type in your questions because I've probably already got them built in here to answer for you before you take the trouble to type them in. And then John and Stephanie won't have to weed them out. All right, if you're on this webinar right now and you don't know anything about the old guy here, um, frankly, there's not much you need to know except I've been around forever. They call me Moses. I've been training for over 25 years. I'm a real player. I still buy and sell houses. Done over 2,000 of them. Quick count a long time ago. Real estate developer and um, got all kinds of kids and grandkids and grandkids of my kids. My grandkids have got kids, and I, mean, I can't even keep track of them anymore. So let's get away from um, why we're so important and get to the point of this webinar very quickly, and that is to see if we can't um, fix a, a little problem in 
uh, your business, my business, and the Ionati's business today. And frankly, that's how this axe thing was born that you're about to hear about. And I know that it's in my case. Um, we just did an event down here in Jacksonville, and um, I went back to the FISBO leads that we turned up, and that over 50% of those were overfinanced. And I suspect that that's pretty much like it is in Pennsylvania or New yeah. Jersey or uh, yeah. Georgia or Phoenix or wherever we're at, right? Yep. So <clears throat> this is the problem that we've never had in our business before to the degree that we have it today because we never had the equity uh, drop that we've had uh, that we have in our current time. So everybody's lost their, most of their equity, if not all of it, out of their properties. Uh, many of the properties in the country are extremely upside down. Some of them, I mean, grossly overfinanced, uh, at least. And that's, I know that's the way it is here. Of course, we got hit pretty hard here in Florida. Some areas did not get hit as hard as we did, but pretty much every area lost a lot of the equity in the property. So that creates a whole new dynamic for us today, but it also creates an opportunity that the Ionides and myself are about to bring to you guys. So listen up and get ready to take notes because, guys, what we're telling you, you're going to want to do in your business. In fact, uh, I'll tell you, there's all kinds of reasons why that I'm going to cover here, but um, this is an easy technique that any of you can uh, implement. And the um, problem is buying subject to. Uh, when you buy a property subject to, which we've been teaching for years, and which they, how many, how many houses would you say you guys have bought subject to in your life? Oh, probably, I would say about 150. 150. Of course, your life yeah. is 10, year, 10 years long. Uh, right. Uh, I've probably done six or 700 in my life. I still do today, but there's an awful lot of times when I cannot buy subject to because the circumstances dictate for various reasons. Either the seller doesn't, uh, want to leave the loan in their own name or the attorney kills the deal or there somebody kills the deal or they just can't get over the fact that they're putting their credit in our hands. So buying right. subject to is still a valid tool guys and gals. However, we're about to give you a program that you can use that you can implement when you don't want to, or when you can't buy it subject to, uh, some sellers won't sell subject to even when they're suffering. I mean, they can be hurting, behind on payments, and they still do not want to just transfer the ownership to us and leave the loan in their own name. And for those of you who do not clearly understand subject to because you haven't been trained, that's really all it is. Seller deeds the house to you and leaves the loan in their own name. Uh, you do not uh, qualify for any loans or you don't need anybody's permission. Title transfers, but the debt stays in the seller's name until sometime in the future you get it paid off. Um, and of course, that's not going to be the case for every seller out there, but um, we all know that um, way more people will give us their houses than they used to because we have way more people that uh, are in trouble than they used to. But now, let's add another tool to the toolbox and let's make it so that we miss very few deals out there because we got another way to get the seller out and get a buyer in. And then, of course, there are going to be a lot of times when an investor just doesn't want to take the house subject to because they don't want to pay the closing cost or they don't want to take on the responsibility, even though they don't have any real legal liability taking a house subject to, uh, if, you're still, if you make promises to the seller that you're going to make the payments, it could be that you do not want to be in the middle of these houses, especially if they have little or no equity in them. And there is the birth of Axe. Now, John and Stephanie, since you're on this webinar, I have to give you credit for inventing the term Axe. Uh, Thank but you, I can Ron. I can tell you right now that after the webinar is over, I invented it. Just wanted to make that. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Make that clear. All right. So, uh, why don't you guys tell them what is Axe? Well, you know, Axe came about by uh, 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 need, uh, necessity. Uh, you know, with the lenders not lending and buyers not being able to buy and the sellers not being able to sell. Um, we we had to do something, and what we did was we went back to our our roots of what Ron taught us way back when, and uh, we we find you know those sellers that are over leveraged and they're willing to uh, accept terms uh, of selling, and we uh, option to buy the con uh, the property with the the terms, uh, giving you know full disclosure to the uh, seller and also to our buyer, so everybody's on the same page, and we set everybody up for a win. You know, the buyer set up the win, the seller set up the win, and uh, most of these, we're taking just our uh, assignment fee in the middle, 
Uh, but along the way, you know, we're also finding some no, low hanging fruit that we want to hang on to, and we stay in the middle. And uh, all right, well, let me translate for you, John. Can I? Yeah. You know, that's what I do. I translate. Go all ahead. Right. Now, guys, listen to this because um, I'm, well, I'll give you an example here in just a minute. But acts is that we control the property just like we always do. Um, in this case, though, we're not going to buy the property. We're going to either lease option it or we're going to option it. We can buy it, uh, but if we buy it, uh, well, we can buy it. If we want to, and there are going to be times like John was about to tell you that we want to, and I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But our whole goal here is, is to find the people that are largely, the most of them you're going to do are the ones that's going to be leveraged highly, but that is not necessarily the case because I want you to understand that tax applies to owner uh, free and clear houses. It yeah. applies to houses that we lease option, and it applies to houses that we option. Thus, the term assigning contract and terms. Now, I will tell you that the, mo the most common term that you're going to assign is you've leased option optioned it from the um, seller, and then you are assigning that lease option to the buyer. Uh, would you guys agree with that? Correct. That's correct, Ron. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We're literally, most of the time, going to arrange for the seller to lease option it directly to the buyer and get a fee for doing so. Correct. Correct. All right. So let me give you an example here. And yes, it is legal, guys. So again, we're going to get to the questions before you have a chance to ask them. I'll answer that in a minute. Here's an example of a house worth $150,000. Now, um, I will tell you that this house has got to be livable. It does not have to be in excellent shape, but the more excellent shape it is in this case, the better. I mean, I, I, I would like for them not to need any work, but um, we've done several of these already that need some work, and we just put the tenant buyers in there as is. In this case, the loan is more than the value. We've got a $162,000 loan with 27 years left on it, and the payment is 1120 PITI. So we option the house from the seller for the loan balance for the remainder of the term, uh, and our rent will equal their payment. In other words, the seller will get nothing except debt relief from this program and I don't know about you guys but in this case I would ask this I would make sure that the seller is aware that they're going to make the payment until we install the tenant buyer in the property which is our next step and uh, this is something uh, guys that we need to make clear to our listeners because um, our, our whole job is to find the tenant buyer but when we're using the acts program the seller must approve our tenant buyer so we just don't cram them down their throat. You want to dwell on that Correct. a sec? Yes, absolutely. Um, we actually do all of the checks um, as part of the service that we do to, for our buyer and our seller. And we check their criminal, their credit, their employment, their prior landlord, and we present all of that to the seller. They review it. They meet the tenant buyer, and they give the final approval. We can approve, but if they don't approve, it's done. It's on to okay. the next person. All right, so you do for the seller what you would normally do in your normal realm of business anyway because our one of our favorite exit strategies, in fact, my favorite is to lease option to tenant buyers after we buy the house, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct. In, in this case, you're going to go in there and you're going to get a little simple option agreement to buy or a purchase and sale agreement to buy. Correct. But that, and that agreement says that you're going to buy for what they owe and take over their debt uh, for, for uh, the amount that they owe and with their payment and for their term. And you're going to clearly tell the seller, I am not going to buy this property. I am going to lease purchase it to a tenant buyer that you're going to approve, who's going to lease it for what you owe on it. And we're going to get whatever we can get for an assignment fee. Correct? That is correct, Ron. We, we let them know right up front that we're, we're investors. We're not planning on moving into the property. And we're going to do what we do best, and that is find find the buyer who wants to move in and uh, treat the property as their own and eventually own the property. All right. Now, I want to point out to everybody, before we move further and answer the question, well, why would anybody do this, look at the debt and look at the R. This couple actually owes $12,000 more on their house than it's worth. So uh, that will lead to our question here in just a second as to why would the seller do it. First, uh, how can we do this without a license, guys? We can do this without a license, uh, Ron, because what we do is we use the uh, uh, the option contract and we record uh, a memorandum of option or a notice of option against the property, uh, thus giving us an equitable interest in the property to legally market it and sell it as a for sale by owner. 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's make sure everybody's under, under aware of this now. Uh, in this, and you doing this in Pennsylvania because your attorney told you that you should record that option agreement just to make sure that you don't get tagged as a realtor without a license. Correct? That is correct. Okay. So you record the option agreement. You have an equitable interest in the property. Therefore, you have every right to find a tenant buyer and assign it to the seller or create a new deal with the seller because you have an equitable interest. That's correct. Well, for your information, our attorney here in Florida told me that we do not even have to record that option. If we put it under contract to buy or option it, it does give us an equitable interest and we have the right to go solicit a tenant buyer. Same thing. Now, every state's going to have their own rules on this. Uh, but um, I can tell you that uh, in my past history, as long as we have some kind of agreement to buy or option it, it gives us that equitable interest and gives us that right. Now, of course, you happen to have a license and you're listening to this right now. Everything I just said is a moot point anyway. Think about all of the all of the properties that come to you that are fully leveraged, that you can't list, or even over leveraged, that you can't list. And now ask yourself, now can I go after these as an investor? Clearly disclose that I'm an agent, but that I'm not going to list it, that I'm going to take whatever fee I can get out of it for bringing them in a tenant buyer. And the answer is, of course, yes, as long as you have arrangements with your broker and make sure that you don't have any objections from your broker. All right. And well, go Brad, ahead. On, the back, on the back side of that, anybody that is an investor and not a realtor, they should be contacting every realtor they know and say, if you ever in a position that you have a property that is over leveraged or you can't do anything with, please get it to us ASAP because we probably can help them. Amen. All right. And then the next one, of course, is why would the buyer pay more than what it's worth? Now, guys, I got to tell you, this is one that I struggled with when you first told me about this program over dinner in some city. I can't even remember where we're at. I, I thought you were smoking something. <laughs> uh, uh, in my example here that I used $162,000 debt on a $150,000 house, why would anybody want to come in and lease option it from, uh, from me or the seller? Well, it, it's pretty simple, really. It comes down to most people in this country cannot get financed right now. So that's the number one big reason. The number two big reason is that our assignment fee in most cases is less than any down payment they would have to put to get conventional financing. All right. Well, while you're on that subject, Stephanie, how many of these are you guys currently doing per month right now in your own business? And what's the average dollar amount you get out of each? We're doing on average between four to eight a month. And our average is about $6,500 per release fee. Wow. All right. Now, guys, I want you to write that down while you're writing four to eight a month, average $6,500 per house. Now you see if that would, uh, well, you're not as good as the Iannotti, so cut it in half. Do four of them a month and average $5,000. Would that make a dent in your budget? Now, here's the key. Here's the big key. They're not buying a single house. They're not closing on anything. They're not paying any closing costs. They're just simply the middleman and getting paid an assignment fee for knowing what they know. So please don't lose sight of that fact. And now they got the majority of the FISBOs in the marketplace as candidates to present this offer to. So let's get on with these questions so we can get over the mental hurdles and, um, and, and see if we can't get this through to you. Now, uh, here's my answer to this question. The answer is that you didn't mention, Stephanie. The reason that the buyer will come in and lease option the property is, A, you did say they can't get qualified for a loan, but B, we can lease the property to them for the full term of the debt because the seller is agreeing to do it because honestly, they don't have any choice. So in other words, my pitch to the buyer is very simple. Listen, come on in and lease option this property, move into this beautiful home, give me five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand $10,000, whatever they got. You, you continue to live in the home until the equity catches up with the debt or until you don't want to live there anymore. Because there is no legal obligation for them to buy the house. They are optioning it from the seller. And then, of course, if they don't want to live there anymore, then we're going to pro program the seller to, to get back with us and let's do it again, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, somebody's got an open line there. I'm getting reverb here. Um, if, you, if you've done anything to your phone, do it back. All right. All right. So the tenant buyer literally has 
uh, the full amount of the term. In fact, let me go back here just a minute. You'll remember the term was 27 years. So therein is the catch. Now, that means that when we lease option this property from that seller, that the seller is going to give us a 27-year term. Basically, it's going to save for the duration of the loan. And now we can pass that on to our tenant buyer. However, guys, I'll tell you what I'm doing just for the sake of the seller. And we haven't discussed this. I'm just putting a 10-year term when I lease option it to my buyer. Okay. That's that, fine. Instead of uh, making the seller in the deal for the whole 27 years, and I'm telling you right now, the buyer could care less. 10 years in their mind, well, golly, the prices are going to go back up, and I'm going to be cool and be able to get it refinanced by then, no problem. Right. Sure. Yeah. That's, what, that's what's great about this, Ron. You can pretty much do whatever. Yeah. And we were talking to our attorney last night, and that's what he said. He said, do whatever terms works. Yeah. All right. Let me give you an example of one that we just do here in Jacksonville right now. Guys, you want to write down these numbers here real quick. We have a 239, well, actually, it's a $220,000 house. It's in a great area of town out on the south side. Beautiful house, beautiful condition, quality house, quality area. Problem is $239,000 owed on it, and there's an $1,800 a month PITI. So write that down, 239 debt. 220R, $1,800 a month PITI. The seller would do it, literally, whatever we ask them to do, they're happy to do. So we got a purchase and sale agreement on it, and we installed a tenant buyer in it for $5,000. $5,000, not a big deal. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, come on, not, not, that's not going to make anybody rich. But look how easy the deal was. We got a contract, we lease optioned it out, we're done. The, in this case, we put them in there on a 10-year lease option term. They were thrilled with it. The seller was thrilled with it because we already programmed the seller that uh, it was going to go for the whole 27 years. So everybody wins. Bank continues to get paid. House stays out of foreclosure. Seller gets debt relief. Buyer gets in a home they couldn't get into. And in fact, it's going to take this couple at least a year to year and a half to clean up their credit. So uh, I want to make sure everybody gets the, the, how simple this thing really is. All right. Well, why would the seller allow such a long-term lease? Uh, you guys want to address that? Well, here again, Ron, you know, what, uh, what options do they have? I mean, uh, they can't sell the property because of either it being fully leveraged or over leveraged. And, uh, you know, the realtors won't touch it because there's no room in there for a commission. So, you know, the only way to cover the, uh, the, the mortgage payments is to lease the property. And if we, we come in and we show them how we can do that, um, uh, and get, get the debt off their back, well, they win. You're right. And actually there's only three options they have. Number one, is to help to work with us. Number two is to give it back to the bank. And number three is to get a short sale done on it. Right. And the problem with a short sale is it still requires a qualified cash buyer to come in and buy the house and the bank's cooperation on discounting the debt, which is getting harder and harder to get. So when you think about it, that is their only, well, of course, their fourth option is to continue making payments on an over leveraged house. And uh, we're assuming here that when the seller calls us or we call them because it's a an ad in the paper that they're ready to get out of the house and they're that they're mentally moved already. So will it work for every seller we run across? No. God, I hope not. Or we'd have, we'd need an army to service them all. But it, it's working four to eight times a month for you guys. That's for sure. And frankly, we're getting cranked up around here to do the same thing. We've got probably five, six, seven, eight, nine of these things working simultaneously right now. Yeah. Uh, thanks to you. I'm not going to have to send you a check or anything like that, am I? Well, it sure would be nice. Uh, right. Well, you hold your breath, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, I think we've covered this, but the seller is fully aware of what we're doing. No secrets here. No games. Um, everything is fully disclosed. So we go into this deal right up front telling the seller, uh, look, you owe $239,000. we are not going to buy your house, and neither is anybody else. Uh, it's only worth about two, two, twenty, two, two, twenty, two, twenty-five. 220 $220, $220, $220, $220, $220, $220, $220. So we're going to find you a good quality tenant buyer. You're going to approve them and give them a long-term lease option. Gosh, it wasn't hard to sell it. It just wasn't hard to sell it. All right, what paperwork do we need to get this done, guys? Everybody's uh, afraid of the paperwork. You know, we, we use uh, just three pieces of paper, Ron. That's, a, that's the option, the uh, notice of option, and the seller's property disclosure. Uh, and, you know, in Florida, it sounds like uh, what you're going to be doing is just, uh, you know, your contract and your seller's disclosure. Well, I, uh, all we use is a contract, and um, the seller's disclosure is, uh, 
and on the back of the contract, I put it in paragraph 18, what our intent is. Yep. And, and then um, when uh, we get the tenant buyer, we don't do the paperwork. We do it the same way we've been doing it for years, and that's just send it over to the attorney and let the attorney close it. Yep. Now, in, in the case where we put the seller and the buyer together, of course, now the seller has to sign the lease agreement as well as the buyer signing it. And the attorney is crystal clear that the difference of whatever we collect is the assignment fee. That's so it's, uh, <laughs> my paperwork is only get the agreement signed and then – uh, the, there's a yellow pad where I write down the terms of the lease option to the to the tenant buyer, just like we always do. And then we just send it over to the attorney, like I said. Uh, it's really that simple, guys. And that's the beauty of this thing is the simplicity. We don't, you know, we don't have any repairs, no contractors, no costly delays, no costly entanglements, uh, no loans to worry about. We're in, we're out. And if you have built yourself a buyer's list, my goodness, you probably got way more people looking for houses then you have houses. So this is a chance for you to plug many of them in. All right, here's where we're gonna answer this question. Does this only work on over leveraged houses? Obviously that's gonna be the biggest share of our business, agreed? That, that's yeah. correct, uh, but it, it does work on free and clear. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, most of the leads we're getting right now uh, seem to be free and clear houses and the sellers are, are have tried to sell through realtors and they couldn't do it and uh, they're trying to sell it themselves. They couldn't do it. They call us and we show them how we can do it and get them what they're wanting and even more if they sell or finance them uh, with terms. All right. And here, that's a very important point, John. So you guys listen to this point uh, because this one will make you a lot of deals where you have previously lost them. I can't tell you how many times that I've tried to do seller financing with the seller. And even though they're willing to seller finance it, they're not willing to give as much of a discount. Now, here, here we come now with acts. Our extra strategy is not to buy it and then sell it with owner financing and do a wrap like I would normally do. Now our exit strategy is get a little bit of discount. Just get a little in there. $200,000 house, write it up at one ninety five if you have to. And any seller will do that for you, most likely. Get the best payment you can get. It doesn't even have to... It, it doesn't even have to concur with my old demand that I want a real low payment so I can get a huge monthly spread. Now, of course, I'm going to be shooting for a low monthly payment because the key here is, is if I do create the sweetheart seller financing that I would normally demand, now I'm going to actually buy it, and then I will lease option it out or sell it on a wrap so that I can stay in the deal and collect the monthly spread as well as the difference on the uh, front end down payments. But now if the seller is not cooperative, and they won't let me buy it at a di big discount, but they will give me a reasonable monthly payment. Now I can just agree to buy it at 195 and now bring in a uh, somebody else to take over my terms. So if, if I agreed to give the seller $5,000 down, I'll go out and get somebody with $20,000 down. Is that about the long and the short of it, guys? And just to sign right. them my contract. Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, it absolutely works with seller financing. And just in case you guys aren't aware of it, 34% of the houses in this country are free and clear. 34% of them are free and clear. You don't much hear about those on TV because rarely do, rarely do they ever go into foreclosure. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, how do I explain the assignment fee to the buyer? Because uh, I had a little trouble on this one in the beginning as well till I figured it out and I uh, created some uh, good uh, language for it. And, trained my uh, my uh, team here to uh, be careful what they say because you do have to be careful. Let's take my house, my 239 house. If I got $5,000 above the 239, what I don't want to say is, is I'm selling you the house for 244. What we, what we say is we're going to sell you the house for the loan balance, which is about 239. You can lease purchase it on a long-term lease with a $5,000 assignment fee. Correct. I, 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 would you say it any different? No, that's that's how we do it. Okay. Uh, so uh, you don't have any problem with that with your buyers? Never, not no. once. Nope. Okay. So um, there's so, so but, but but we're looking for something complicated here. Okay. <laughs> I guess I guess we could. Somebody could say, well, is that not applying towards any of my principles? But and what would your answer be? It, my answer would be. Um, unfortunately, it is not. This is how we actually 
are able to coordinate the deal. This is the fee that we receive, and it does not apply. But the one benefit that you do get is as every payment that you make on this property on time, you are getting basically the principal brought down because when you buy in 10 years it, when you, or before, whatever the principal balance is at that point is what you're going to pay. Well, there you go. Now, see, that's something we probably didn't address. That because the, the, our lease option agreement to our tenant buyer simply says that the purchase price is the loan balance at the time they purchase. But, to, but it does disclose that the day the loan balance is approximately 239000 in my example. Correct. That's okay. Correct. All right. So I hope you guys remember now, if you guys have questions that I haven't answered yet, go to the question box, write them in there, and we're going to answer them when we're through. And Nadies are going to repeat them back to me. In case you just joined us, you have that option. And you can type them in there anytime you want, because I'm about at the end of the questions that I programmed into it. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and start that, you can. All right. Well, um, what if I don't want to sign the contract and I'd rather stay in the deal? Obviously, that is my choice, especially if I've created a sweet deal. And here's the, here's the ones I'm going to stay in, just so um, our listeners know. If, I, if there's equity in the property and the payment is low so that I do get uh, some equity later and a monthly spread on the payment, and it's a nice property in a nice neighborhood and I get in for nothing, I'm probably going to stay in the deal probably going to stay in the deal. However, uh, today, I may not take over the debt subject to, folks. I may lease option it instead and then sublease it to a tenant buyer. We're going to come back to that here in just a minute because that's one of the subjects that we are going to cover in the two-day event that I'm going to give you guys a chance to get into here shortly and bring it back to life. And that is the old technique that uh, I discussed earlier in this webinar we used to use that a lot back in the 80s and all the way up into the 90s. But during that time, it became so easy to take over debt subject to that I quit teaching lease options. But now it's time to revise that entire system and bring it back to light and now blend acts in with it. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, and that is the old technique that I'm referring to is uh, lease purchases and uh, <clears throat> Um, uh, we're also blending this in with options. So, uh, guys, suppose I go out and I find a, um, I don't know, uh, 800, well, here, I'll tell you what, I got an example right here. Suppose I find an $800,000 house in excellent condition, obviously in a great neighborhood, and they're asking six fifty dollars for it, but they want all cash. All right? Yep. Um, I agree to pay five fifty, dollars but I point blank tell them, I'm not going to be the one bringing the money to the table. I'm going to go find somebody who will pay me more, and you're going to sell it directly to them when I do. I need an option agreement from you right now to option it for 550 to make it uh, illegal for me to go find this buyer and plug them into this program. Now, how would X fit into that? Well, same way, Ron. Uh, what you're doing is you're getting the property under contract for terms, and the terms here are cash. Uh, for 550, you now go market the property for sale. Find that buyer who will pay you more than 550, and in, in the example, they're they're going to pay you uh, 650, and uh, you can sell it to them for cash for the 650, make a hundred thousand uh, dollars, or you can assign just assign the option contract to them, and they close with the uh, um, seller. Uh, for a fee, and in your example, you got twenty five thousand dollars that you're mm -hmm. going to make on the fee. So if I got um, if I got um, um, a long term option on the property, I might just assign it, give my buyer plenty of time. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this option. Um, I'm going to get it under contract to buy it for five fifty, and I've done this several times. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go find a seller who wants to buy it. I mean, a buyer who wants to buy it. Period. And then if they cannot pay cash for it, then I'm going to find out what they can do, John. For example, that what, let's suppose they're willing to pay the six fifty, but they got two hundred thousand dollars down, and they need owner financing for the balance. You, you can rest assured, I'm going to go back and create a new deal with that seller. Absolutely. And I'm, and, and I'm going to change it. I'm not letting two hundred thousand dollars get away. Uh, yep. Some part of it's got to go to the seller. So in this case right here, if I sold it for six fifty and I agreed to pay five fifty, I go back to the seller and I say, listen, man. Um, I got a buyer who will pay uh, 650 
You got 200 down. I'm keeping 100, and I'm giving you 100. So your balance will be owed to you 450. But you got to create some terms on this thing, at least for whatever you know. Suppose my buyer said I can buy it, but it's going to take me three years. I'm going to go back and ask that seller to finance that thing for three years and take my hundred thousand dollars to go away. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So um, by by um, having the exit strategy that I can assign whatever I create, it makes it easier for me to then open the door to find a buyer, then fix the fix the deal to suit the buyer. Mm -hmm. So to recap, guys. We're going to go out in the marketplace today, and we're going to um, either take them over subject to if we like what we see and we're getting plenty of equity to make it worthwhile, and we're willing to pay the closing cost. If, we're, if that doesn't, isn't it applicable or the seller is not interested in that, then we will offer a lease purchase deal where we'll lease it from you with the right to sublease it, which incidentally cannot trigger the due on sale clause and is not a problem for attorneys, and or we'll option it from you. Either way, we, uh, we have the right to go assign those contracts or create new ones and put seller directly with buyer along the way. Uh, and um, we do not have to get these things at a steal to make it work because we, uh, because we are building in the terms that we're going to assign. All right, anything you guys want to add to that before I, will we tell them about this event we got coming up? Nope, I think that covers it. I think that covers it, Ron. The main thing, is, like, like you just said there in the end was uh, – uh, we really don't care what terms we negotiate. Of course, we're trying to negotiate the best deal we can because it makes it easier to sell the contract. But uh, whatever whatever terms I can get, uh, we'll take. And then we'll try and sell it off. If we can't, then like you said, we come back later on to the seller and renegotiate the contract. Right. With nothing to lose, you got no deposit. You got $10 involved in the deposit max. And again, no credit, no loans, no entanglement. So the real key here is to go build your buyer's list large first, find out what you got to work with, and then go into the neighborhoods where you got the hot buyers and know what they want to work with, and then find properties to deliver to those buyers. And of course, if you guys will listen to me and do it that way, <laughs> you'll find this business 10 times easier than most people think it is because they're always out there looking for a buyer for a house. We're looking for houses for buyers. Right. All right. All right. Well, let's, uh, we're going to do an event for you guys. It's two days and it's one time only. So uh, take down these notes and again, keep putting your questions in there now. And that event is going to be in Orlando on September the 30th, October 1st, one time. And it's the Ionatis and myself together for two days. And we're going to cover a lot of stuff for you in that two day period. And uh, I will confess to you that I'm actually creating a new course out of this that I will be recording at that time, but it'll be at least six to eight weeks after that fact where that course is ready. Now, this thing is step-by-step, uh, step, and literally, we're going to cover the ACT system, and that's why the Ionides are there. Um, I've got lease options and options nailed down to a science, but I want the Ionides there so you can pick their brain, see what they do, and we're going to share everything that they do with you and make sure that we put it into a systematic format so that you can easily duplicate it and you don't have any hurdles left to climb and get out of there. I'm going to spend the time on the lease options. Now, when I say lease options, please don't confuse this with selling to tenant buyers because a lot of people that haven't been around very long uh, don't really understand that we can go lease option from the seller then a sublease or assign that lease. I'm going to teach you the business of lease optioning properties from the seller. That is what our focus is going to be on. Yes, we will be touching on exiting from them, but this is not a selling houses, uh, so to speak, seminar as much as it is a lease optioning from the seller. And we're also going to cover options here in just a minute. And then the access is, uh, is going to be incorporated into that. Okay, I've lease optioned it, or I've optioned it, or I'm even buying it. Now, acts, when does acts apply? When does it not apply? Step by step process to lease option house from a seller. And if acts is applicable, how to incorporate it into the exit strategy. And if it's not, why isn't it? And uh, can I make it applicable? Or do I need to go to my other portfolio of techniques here? And acts is not, a, uh, we can't use acts on this deal. Uh, how to quickly pre screen good lease option and option candidates. So you don't have to spend a lot of wasted time chasing dead ends. And yes, we're going to put all the scripts in there for you. I'm going to make sure that you know word for word what to ask. It isn't that complicated, folks. It just isn't. Uh, there's, you know, we've only got three types of deals here. And uh, seven reasons why lease options will save the deal when subject two fails. There's actually more than seven, but I've got a list of 
seven of the most common reasons, and we're going to uh, make sure you're equipped to handle anything that comes at you along that line. How to target the best lease option candidate so you can work only with sellers who need you badly. So much easier. I have no patience with people who want to make up all the rules, uh, pre-screen me, and make life miserable for me. I'm telling you right now, they get out of my life in a nanosecond. And um, same with sellers. We're looking for the sellers who need us and will listen to our solutions. We won't always get them. We won't always do the deal, but I can tell you right now, I, I'll know if I can do the deal long before we ever leave our desk. We don't go running around looking at houses, hoping that, uh, the, that the seller is going to cooperate with us. They know what we're going to do before we even go. Now, they don't necessarily know the numbers, but um, I'll know whether that we're going to do a deal before I get off the telephone. And then I, I've trained my folks to do the same thing, and that's a pretty easy thing to do. So we're also going to discuss the deadly mistakes to avoid when lease optioning houses, and I got to tell you, this is one of the reasons why I quit teaching it back in the uh, mid 2000s. Students were making some some um, mistakes that I don't think they should have been making because they just weren't implementing what I taught them to do. And um, I, I quit. Uh, I got to the point to where it was just as easy to get the deed back then as it was the lease option. So I stopped teaching it. Well, I'm reversing that today, and I'm bringing that entire system back into to our uh, toolbox so that we can um, go out and get a lot of deals we haven't been getting. High price versus low price. This thing works just as much on the high price stuff. In fact, I would much rather deal into to the half million, million, million and a half, two million dollar houses than I than I would the cheapies. And in fact, uh, guys with this ACT program, I, I'm telling you, you can do it on a hundred thousand dollar house if you want. But just how much money are you going to get out of somebody to put them in a hundred thousand dollar house? Uh, I've discovered that if I get up above the 150 uh, into the 150 to the um, 350, 400 range where I live, it's so much easier to get so much more money out of the people who want the beautiful houses in the beautiful neighborhoods. I bet you guys have discovered that too, haven't you, down here in Florida? Yes, absolutely. Correct, Ron. Uh, so uh, the more dollars you wallow in, the more stick to you, huh? Some smart guy said that. <laughs> yep. He sure did. <laughs> all right, how to answer all the seller objections. Uh, to be honest with you, if you do a good job of pre-screening like I teach you, you'll have very few seller objections. But, yes, we do need to cover them. When they do come up, it's all going to be scripted for you. And you're going to get my special agreements. My special agreements, it took me an awful lot of years and um, attorney fees to create for you. And I do have a very special lease option agreement for you to buy the house with. And I do not want you to go out and buy a house with a lease option agreement you pull out of a book somewhere, not even mine. The one that I use to buy houses with is not posted anywhere. I'm redoing it and I'm bringing it back and I'll have it in the system for you here. And believe me, it protects you. You do not want to use the same agreement that you put a lease option tenant in the house in uh, to buy the house from the seller. It's two totally separate agreements if you intend to remain in the deal. If you do not intend to remain in the deal, uh, John, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm, now, I'm using the same lease option agreement that I would install a tenant buyer in a house I bought I'm using that one, which protects me as the seller. I'm using that one if I'm uh, doing a lease purchase from the seller directly to the buyer because it protects our seller. Are, yeah, are you... yeah, Ron, that works. That's okay. great. All right. Uh, guys, I'm also going to cover options in this event, which is a whole business within the business. And then I'll, you'll learn um, every single uh, thing you need to know about options, but um, uh, also um, – why this is such a great time to do them. I mean, come on, you've got to know where you live that you've got some beautiful homes. Uh, many of them are free and clear or close. A lot of them have a lot of equity in them that you can um, option for a fraction of what their real value is. And if you don't know that, you just haven't been looking around. It's happening all over the country. How to target the best prospects after you learn uh, what they are and how to quickly and easily approach the seller to see if he or she is in or out with a simple script anyone can ask. And again, I can't option everybody's house, but I'll know with one simple question or series of questions whether uh, they have any in interest in optioning it to me or not. And then I'm going to teach you how to approach them and make it risk-free for them so that it's difficult for them to say no if they truly have intent to sell their houses. Uh, what houses not to touch? And there's a, all, there's a whole bunch of houses that I don't want you to even think about optioning because they're a gross waste of your time. And they'll turn you off, and um, they'll just uh, make life miserable for you. So um, 
uh, options do not apply to every property. So just get the big picture here. I'm either calling FISBOs or I'm having FISBOs call me. Or I'm putting out signs or I'm mailing yellow letters or I'm putting ads in the paper or on and online and FISBOs are calling me. They're going to come in all sizes. They're going to come free and clear. They're going to come leveraged with some equity. They're going to come over leveraged with no equity. My whole goal here is to let you uh, put yourself in a position to where you can take that property information sheet, decide what model it best fits in. It may be a lease option where you lease option are from the seller. It may be an option to where you don't want to lease, can't, the seller won't let you put a, a stall attendant buyer in the house. It may be a subject to deal. It may be a deal best suited for owner financing because the series of questions that I'll drop in your lap lead you to buy the house because it looks like you're going to get a great deal on it. So I'm going to make you a transaction engineer by incorporating the lease options and the options and the acts program into your total overall buying strategy. How to and when to incorporate options into the acts. I just said that how to option in uh, for fast cash and uh, later convert to terms like we were discussing earlier and how to protect yourself. Uh, if you haven't been in the business long, then you probably haven't learned yet that some people actually don't keep their promises. And I know this may come as a shock to some, but just because you've got a contract with a seller doesn't necessarily mean that seller is going to honor that contract. <laughs> Should they? Yes. Do they have a legal binding contract? Yes. But I can tell you for a fact, somebody comes along and offers them a little bit more money, that contract is going to mean less and less to that individual, especially if they have full intentions of leaving town after uh, they sell the property to somebody else who made them a better offer. Well, that ain't going to happen in uh, your world because I've got a special agreement that I'm going to, I mean, not an agreement, but a form that uh, I'm going to drop in your lap that will let you record your option or record your lease option so that the seller cannot sell a house behind your back without your permission. And that form does not require the seller's permission or signature to record. So I'm going to make sure you leave prepared to open up a whole new income stream into your business so you can at least go do one or two or three of these axe deals per month with stuff that you're currently throwing in the trash right now. All right, there's the cost of this two-day event. It's three payments of $199 or one payment of $497 unless you're a master's. Now, if you're a master's, Please call Dolores at that number on your screen. Uh, actually, if you're going to call Dolores, call her at 904-262-0491. That's 904-262-0491. It's not up on your screen. Uh, if you're a master's, you, are, you already should have Dolores' phone number. And, whoop, are you still there, John? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. I knocked my equipment off the table here. Oh, let me get reset here. If you're a master, you should already have Dolores' phone number. And uh, deeply discount for masters. We take care of our masters. So um, do not register uh, on the uh, order form and close to your uh, and call Dolores direct. But if you're not a master's, three payments of $199 or one payment of $497 will get you into this event. And, of course, it's going to get you all the tools that, come along, that comes with it. Uh, so we will have a way. 150 is our capacity. And uh, there's where you register, 800-567-6128. If you happen to be driving down the road here and not watching us on the screen, 800-567-6128. Or if you're on the screen, you can go to ronlegrand.com forward slash acts, A-C-T-S. If it were me, I'd just call the number because it's a whole lot easier than going on and filling out a form online. But, hey, I'm an old guy. What do I know? <laughs> some, some people would rather go fill out the form. Me, I'd rather have a root canal. <laughs> yeah. You guys can do it any way you want, but uh, get in there right now because we will cap out at 150. All right. You may bring your spouse or a family member or someone in your business at absolutely no charge, but please, they must be in that group, spouse, parent, child, or significant other, or someone working in your business, and you may bring an additional guest for $250 as long as they're in the above list. This is a one-time only thing, guys, in Orlando, uh, September 30th and October the 1st, so uh, this is going to be your only shot at this. You will get the complete manual in the, uh, that we create that uh, has all the forms and options and agreements and everything in it you need. And by the time you leave, you know how to use it. Because literally, I'm going to make sure that we go step by step. And the I&I is going to be there to make sure every one of your questions get answered. 
So go to ronaldgram.com forward slash acts and get registered. But here's a bonus for you. My friend Jay Connor is also going to be there the day before. Well, he'll be in the acts event as well as a student, and I'm sure we're going to pick his brain too. But the day before, he's going to do a special one-day seminar, uh, and uh, he's actually creating a course. And half of that seminar is going to be on, uh, he's got a whole foreclosure system where he has a series of direct mail pieces that he sends to people that are in foreclosure or about to be. He's getting a 60% response rate on this series of direct mail. I mean, it even beats the crap out of the yellow letter. Uh, so Jay is going to literally lay that out for you during this one-day seminar and give you those letters uh, just for attending. And you'll leave, so you'll leave with all of those. And that's, that's one course that he's creating. And then the second course that he's creating is how he runs his uh, business. He makes over a million dollars a year and has done so for the last two years running. And uh, he is going to create a, a course that shows his system to how literally he can he can work uh, less than 10 hours a week and create that kind of revenue in a city of 40,000 people, which incidentally is Moorhead City, North Carolina, just got clobbered with that hurricane. So not only is Jay a great presenter, a great guy, and a swell human being and fun to be around, but uh, he's very, very knowledgeable about what he's doing, and he wants to share that with you on that special one-day uh, seminar that he's doing prior to it. So that'd be on the 29th now. So Jay's seminar is $99 if you want to do nothing but Jay which I would think would be nuts, uh, but it's free. For four, if you prepay the entire Axe event for four ninety seven, you get all three days, and you're in, and you get the manuals for both, and you become part of Jay's recording. So uh, he will be recording that, so make sure you don't come with anybody you're not supposed to be, because I think he's videoing and audioing it that day. So that's it, guys. Uh, guys, do we have some questions from our listening audience there? Yes, we sure do, Ron. Um, the first question we have is, do you have to disclose to the seller the amount you collect from your tenant buyer? Uh, well, you don't know that. You mean at the time we put the tenant buyer in a house, I would, I would guess. Is that correct? Yeah. That's the way you take it? Yeah. Uh, well, frankly, I don't, uh, we don't, but I don't think anybody cares. It wouldn't bother me to do it. They're fully aware that that uh, we're going to uh, collect the fee to assign the contract from the beginning. It shouldn't be a shock to them. Uh, you, you tell me. What's your answer? It's the same answer. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, really don't have any issues with that. I can honestly tell you I don't remember anybody even asking. Uh, Ron, Ron, what I tell people is, you know, I'm getting you what you want. So if I make a dollar or a million dollars over that, that price, that's what I make. Yeah, I think um, the tendency here would be to forget the mindset of the seller we're working with to begin with, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you shouldn't do that because these people need us badly. Golly, there's only a few of us can solve their problems. There's thousands of those uh, houses out there that uh, have these issues. And, and we, we talked about a free and clear house, guys. Uh, remember, even if I got a free and clear house, I still got the same problem everybody else has got is trying to find that almighty uh, powerful cash buyer, the one who can get qualified. So, you know, I still may have issues and I need to sell my house. And a lot of people, a lot of people, which is surprising to some brand new investors, would rather have that monthly income coming in than that big wad of cash. Yeah. And even even if they wouldn't rather have it, they will settle for it just to get the house sold. Especially, exactly. and I don't know about you, but I find that most of my um, free and clear deals are with uh, senior citizens. That's yeah, correct. Is that Absolutely. true for you? Yeah. 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 And, and they like that income because they don't trust Social Security. Correct. Yeah, and you just actually brought something um, to the tip of my forehead that I wanted to make sure that we said too, Ron, is that one of the things we've noticed now is our number one buyer, or buyers, I should say, are actually landlords. We have our landlords here in the area standing in line, but when we get these contract terms, they want everyone we can give them. Really? Yes. Why, why is that? Why, uh, what entices landlords to these deals when they're leveraged highly? They can't get financed. Oh, but they can get more rent than they're paying out per month. Correct. So the ones Correct. that they really want are the ones with the low payments on them. I can understand that. Sure. Yep. yep. All yep. right. Okay. okay. Next um, question. Next question um, is, what are the terms of a lease option? Do you understand that question? No, I do not. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the terms of a lease option uh, are almost always the same as the underlying debt. Like I showed in my example, 
if it's a if it's a $162,000 loan and the payment is 1120, then that's the terms of my lease option. We're paying 162 for the house at 1120 a month. Uh, in our case, for 27 years, one of my example I showed on the board there. Correct. So the lease option mirrors the uh, underlying debt. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, your simple agreements that I'm going to drop in your lap are just are going to have in it that the um, that the uh, payment will equal the underlying debt and the term will equal the underlying debt. It's built right into your lease option agreement when you buy. And if you don't do it and if you sign it to somebody else, same thing. And of course, okay. if, I, if I'm buying it with owner financing, it's whatever we negotiate with the seller. Even if I assign my contract, it's still whatever I negotiate. And, right. the, and my buyer closes with my seller instead of me in the middle. I hope we answered that. I hope that's a question we answered. Yeah, I okay. hope so too. Um, the next one's very easy. Who pays your assignment fee of 6500 the seller or the buyer? Well, answer it. <laughs> it's the buyer, always. Of course, of course. Although I guess it's not unreasonable for the seller to to pay it that's true <laughs> <laughs> certainly not but uh, no we collect from the buyer guys we, the seller's got enough issues we don't try to punish the seller and hey here's something else i forgot to tell you uh john and stephanie I, i'm sure you're doing this as well on the deal that i said with a two hundred thirty nine thousand dollar house our seller is clearly understood that he's going to continue making those payments that we install that tenant buyer Absolutely. Well, well, we put the tenant buyer in, and I asked him to make just one more $1,800 payment before they start taking over. Great. Keep, cool. keep in mind, I collected the 5000 for the assignment fee, but I also collected $1,800 for the first payment, first month's rent, and the $200 for the attorney to do the paperwork. So they put up six, uh, they put up eight, uh, $7,000, but I kept 5000 plus 1800 because the seller was paying the next payment so in reality know, Ron, that actually, i'm sorry uh, so in reality that you got 6800 bucks yeah and it makes a lot of sense because if somebody can pay that 1800 dollars, mortgages are in arrears so really you you've got something they've lived there for a month you know and it's you're yeah. getting that benefit of getting the but, next okay i don't want to confuse anybody though because remember my seller is current now his payments are not behind he's current right. he's current right However, let's address that for a second. Suppose that somebody came to me and they were behind two or three payments. As long as I could get enough cash out of my buyer, I could take that cash and make up those payments out of some of it, or I could get the seller to make up part of them, and um, I make up the rest of them. And, of course, now if this, guy, if this house is grossly over leveraged and he's way behind on payments, as far as I'm concerned, it's a dead deal because there might not be enough cash in it left for me. Well, let's suppose he's got a little equity. Suppose there's ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of equity in the house, and he's two or three payments behind. Well, that means that I've got a chance to get more money out of my tenant buyer, if that makes sense, so that I can get enough to actually bring those payments current. And then, what a great savior you are to that seller! Right. Now, what a blessing you are. Somebody come along, making up the payments, and get somebody in the house to continue making them, getting you out of the foreclosure process. Right. Correct. I think we should get a, a thank you letter from the banks too, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I wouldn't look for that to happen though. No, I wouldn't either. All right. What's the okay. next question? The next one is how do sellers respond to this when they can sell on a short sale with a bank and get a commission? Who can get a commission? Uh, how do realtors respond to oh, that? Oh, realtors. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't talk to realtors about it uh, unless they send a deal to me and, uh, if they do, they've consigned themselves. They're not going to list it. I don't. Realtor's not even involved in this, so I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you? No. I, you know, I think they're trying to say that why give us that deal to do to work when they can, you know, list it as a short sale and still get a commission. Oh well, that's assuming it sells, of course. Of course, and, correct. And um, a lot of realtors won't even do it anymore because banks are getting so miserable to deal with. They don't want to deal with it. Now you take my house, 239000 200 uh, mortgage, $220,000 value. Uh, if, they, if they were going to list it with a short sale for a realtor to short sale, it, um, why haven't they already? Right. Right. You know, somebody still has to go out and find that cash buyer and deal with that bank and take months. In the meantime, I'm sitting here making the payments on my house. Uh, you guys are, whoever asked that question is trying, is thinking too much. Yeah. You, know, you get out there and, and get in the real world and start dealing with all kinds of sellers and all kinds of situations, and you'll discover that uh, you're grossly overthinking it. And again, we made it real clear we can't help everybody anyway, but with the number of FISBOs that are out there, 
the number of deals that we can pre-screen every single week. It ain't a matter of uh, finding them. It's a matter of picking the ones that we can work with and uh, forgetting them about the rest. I mean, I, I don't want anybody to do anything they don't want to do, and uh, I don't need a realtor's blessing to do anything for that matter. Yeah. But, you know, and another thing on that, Ron, why would you take a property to short sale when you don't have to? You know? Well, I can make a case for that. You know, it, it does say, it does say, well, I'm out of it now, and I don't have to worry about it for the upcoming years. And you're going to hear that objection. And if uh, that objection comes about, and they say, well, gosh, I can let my realtor short sale it, and I say, well, why don't you go ahead and do that, and let's get back together after your listing expires, because honestly, I don't want to do it if you don't want to do it. Right. right. Uh, let me move on to the next one in this pile of eight I got to talk to. Yep. <laughs> totally agree. All right. Next question. Okay. What What happens if the seller is way behind on payments? Well, that's going to depend on the rest of the story, as you well know. Um, if I've got a bunch of equity, I might find a way to deal with it. If I don't have any equity, it's probably a dead deal. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. And you'll find a bunch of those. Yep. Uh, you and I have both seen houses out there right now. They're two years behind, haven't we? That's yes, correct. And, and they still haven't filed on them yet. And haven't even filed. That's right. Well, we can't work with those. They're gone. Correct. And the only thing we can do with those is short sale them. Short sale. Yep. Yeah. And if, by the way, one of the things we're going to discuss in this event is the definition of a short sale prospect and uh, and, uh, and and a not a short sale prospect because it is one of our extra strategies here. So I'm going to try to get it all in. Okay. Um, next one is: Does the tenant buyer have the right to also sell the house? Should the values ever come back? Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember, they're leasing it with the option to buy it, which means they have the right to go sell it any time they want. And frankly, that's one of my favorite selling tools. When the equity comes back, you guys can either refinance it or sell it. That's right. That's right. Meantime, you live in it. Worst case, the equity don't come back. You got a beautiful home for a small amount of money, totally under your control for a lot of years to come. It's not a hard sale. Correct. Okay, the next one is, does the tenant buyer have anything in the option that states if they do get financed, they will be able to purchase the house for the balanced owed yes. at the time of close? We just, we just answered that, actually. Yep, that's a yes. yes. Okay. The next one is, how is the tenant buyer protected from the seller putting additional debt on the property? Good question. <laughs> Well, come on. It's already over leveraged and the seller's going to put additional debt on it. <laughs> Who are they going to borrow it from? <laughs> but uh, there is a provision in the lease option agreement that states they cannot do that anyway. Correct. Correct. If the buyer asks, how are they guaranteed the seller will continue to pay the bank each month? Well, that's a good question. And um, the answer is, in my case, if um, the if I'm putting the seller and the buyer together, and that's an issue that bothers the buyer. I'll just make sure that the seller agrees to let the buyer pay the bank directly, which is exactly what I'd do in the same situation anyway. Correct. And in fact, the seller would probably much prefer it so they don't have to even deal with it. And that's what we do too. And yeah. um, we allow the seller to have online access with their code that they can get on and actually see that the payments are being made. So. All right. Okay. Um, when the seller's credit gets clean, and he can afford the house again. Can he repossess the home at the end, whatever term they agreed to? Only if the, um, well, he ain't repossessing it. He's evicting the tenant buyer, but then only if they violate the terms of their lease option. You can't just put somebody out because you feel like it. It is a unilateral agreement. The tenant buyer has the right to live in the house for the whole term as long as they make the payments and keep the house in good condition. Correct. But if they don't pay, then the seller can evict them. And that's a good thing. It is an eviction, not a foreclosure. And another good thing is this does not violate due on sale clause. That's right. Bank okay. cannot call it due. The next one is, this is a good approach to help reduce the inventory on the current market. Yes? <laughs> How oh. many <laughs> I would say. <laughs> How many percent of sellers are willing to accept the long-term lease? <laughs> How many percent of the sellers? Well, let me see. About 18.4%. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Nobody knows the answer to that question. How many sellers are you going to offer the, uh, the AXE program to? How many are you even going to get to come at you? So I, that's, that's not a question I can answer. Yeah. Uh, you know, how good are you at presenting it? Yeah. I don't think we can answer it either. I, I will say the majority of the people we, we present it to, uh, they, they do it. 
and I'm, let's, let's, let's go back to their options. Option A, short sale it. Still got to find a cash buyer. Option B, sit there and continue making the payments on an over-leveraged house. Obviously, they don't want to do that or they wouldn't have called you to begin with or advertised the house for sale. Option C, they can just let it go to foreclosure. And if they want to take one of those other options, then God bless them. You, yeah. you, you know, you've got to deal with the people who want to deal with you and whack the rest at lightning speed. But how many of these do you want to do a month anyway? That's right. By, by, by the way, guys, I think um, you told me the other day when I saw you in class that you were eight for 10 out of the last yeah. 10 sellers you talked to about it. Is that yeah. correct? That is eight correct. Eight for 10. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And it really does come down to how you talk to them. I mean, that makes a big difference. And, and when you lay it out to them that what options do you really have, here are your options. Yeah. You know, you pick. I mean, we're okay no matter what you pick. Just know that we're your plan B. If you pick something else, we're still here for you whenever the time comes that you can't. Yeah. You know, Go list it so. with a realtor and let them try to short sale it for you. I'll see you in three months or six months yeah. or whatever. Of course, that's, yeah. that's three or six payments from now you'll be making. Right. Right, right. Uh, and of course, if they choose not to make them, well, they, well, they'd almost have to choose not to make them. Uh, uh, they, still, six months from now. Well, if they're six months from now and they haven't made a payment in six months, then I'm probably gone anyway by then. That's exactly. And we tell them that. If you wait yeah. too long, we may not be able to help you. That's right. And yeah, look, we deal with the people who want to deal with us, and we whack right. the rest. Yep. <clears throat> okay. The next one is: Do you have to have a title search? Well. Um, it's a smart move to get a title search, uh, and I strongly suggest you do, but you don't have to. There's no, nothing says you have to, but I don't know that, um, well, let's put it this way, though. If my seller is lease optioning to my buyer, I don't need title search. How about you guys? Um, we actually do one. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a quick look at yeah, the just title. A quick look well, that's what a title search is. Now, of course, if yeah, I'm yeah. lease optioning it, if I'm lease optioning it, I'm absolutely going to get a title search before I put a, a tenant buyer in the house to make sure that I can deliver title to them after I've taken their deposit. Right. Well, actually, our attorney, Ron, has a form that the buyer has to agree. Um, if, they, if they are not going to run a title search, then they, he makes them check on there that they've agreed not to and uh -huh. sign it, notarize it so that he has that in his file. Smart move. Yeah. Okay, next question is, what happens when tenant buyer seeks to get loan in a couple years an appraisal is still less than loan balance. Well, then it's not time for them to get a loan, or they can bring some money to closing and buy it, or they can just wait, right. or they can back out of the lease. Correct. Well, frankly, we don't put anybody in the house and lead them to even believe that the equity is going to catch up in two years, because it's not. That's it's right. not. Uh, everybody knows this is a longer-term deal, or they just don't get into it. No pie-in-the-sky promises, no stupid comments. And uh, just put them in there and tell them the facts. And I'm telling you, this is easy. This is the easiest exit strategy for real estate I've seen in my 30 years, guys. This is even easier in wholesale in the house. Yep. <laughs> okay. And, and after this webinar, it was all my idea. Nah, yeah, nah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Ron. <laughs> We're okay with that. Um, the next question is, I want to do rent-to-own option for my buyers who can't qualify for conventional loan from the bank. But my realtor can't understand and is not cooperative. What are what, you? Well, I'd have to ask, what does your realtor have to do with it, for one thing? Exactly. I'd have to have the answer to that question before I can answer the, your question. Yep. I'm, I'm, Lisa, I'm, I'm doing a deal with the FISBO from the seller. I am not doing them with realtors. However, I can tell you that when realtors catch on to this, <laughs> you're, you're going to find a lot of them doing it. And, I'm, you know, I love realtors. A lot, a lot of them are our students. And if I were a realtor, my goodness gracious, this would mean more to me than listing and selling. I can tell you that because I can do 20 of these for every house I list and sell the standard way. For sure. But I don't know why you care what your realtor will or will not do. They're not involved in the deal unless they send you a lead and then they're still not involved in the deal. Right. Okay. The next question is, one second here, I'm sorry. Repeat the script. One second, I, it just went off my screen. One second here. Okay, does this work with variable rate mortgages? What are the risks to buyers? Yep. All we have to do is tell the buyer that the variable rate and their payment uh, could go up. That's it. 
That's it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Just disclose. That's all you got to do. Disclose. That's right. Okay. Explain the free and clear technique again. All right. In a nutshell, that simply means that we agree to buy the property with owner financing from the seller with some terms. It could be 95% of the purchase price for that matter and a decent payment and a smaller down payment as you can possibly get them to accept. And then you either sell it to a new buyer uh, on a owner financing on a wrap with a larger down payment and a larger monthly payment at a higher price, or you lease option it to a new buyer with a higher down payment, a higher monthly payment at a higher price because you've actually closed on it with the seller, or you just find an ax type buyer and assign the contract you created from the seller to your buyer and collect the fee to put them in the middle. Um, I know that was a complicated, I mean, that's why we have to have two days in class, guys. We have to lay this out so you can see it. Yeah. And, and I hope you understood what I just said, but that, see, that's, a, that's my choice. As the business owner, the better deal I create, the more I'm going to want to stay in it. The worse deal I create, the more I'm going to want to sign it and just let some lucky uh, owner or uh, home, uh, lease option tenant buyer take it over. Or in the case of uh, seller financing, I could actually sell the house right then and there with seller financing just putting my seller together with my buyer and taking a fee for the difference. As long as I have it under contract first. Right. Yep. How okay. many more do we have? Um, I, I, don't, I, got, I can't tell, but there's more. Well, okay. I got about two minutes left for more. Okay. All right. Um, how are they finding the seller? How are we finding the seller? Yeah. All right. I've already said it, but I use, we call FISBOs, which is my favorite technique today. We use yellow letters to get them to call us, and we use, uh, you can use signs and ads. In fact, I'm looking, I'm going out this afternoon to buy a box truck to put an I buy house signs on, just so you'll know. Um, I heard, heard that works. Yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> so basically, I'll tell you right now, guys, if you'll just go and, and learn how to get somebody calling Visbos for you, you won't need to do anything else. <laughs> And we're going to cover that, too. I'm going to make sure we do cover that because it's one of the most important parts of your business is to make sure you have an incoming flood of leads every single week from for sale by owners in your city in the areas where you want to buy a house. You will not be able to process those alone. I get about 15 to 20 of those a week, and I, I got one gal doing all the calling. Um, add that to yellow letters. What do you guys do? How do you find these things? Um, our biggest um, right now is our, our – ad in the newspaper, um, and I know most people would cost a lot, but we only pay about, um, I'd say, ours is about $75 for 12 days, so it's relatively inexpensive, mm -hmm. um, and that's our biggest pull, plus our vehicles, mm -hmm. um, signs, and, and right. ads in newspaper, uh, go online, obviously you got to call the ads, uh, you got to run ads online, have them call you, and you also got to call the Fisbo ads online. Probably 20 FISBO sites in the city where you live, way more than you can get to. So I want you to make sure you get somebody else calling them. Again, you get 10, 15, 20 FISBOs a week, and you're going to be buying as many deals as the Ionatis are. R Ron, and uh, houses for rent also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a bunch of landlords out there that they're, they're leveraged to the max and they don't have any other exit. Yep. Yep. That's it. And, home, and homeowners that uh, don't know of any other exit strategy other than trying to rent it to cover their mortgage. Yeah, and I would also remind you that one of the provisions we put in our lease options to our tenant buyers guys is that after the first 30 days, the tenant buyer is responsible for 100% of the repairs. Yeah. That's that's real attractive to a homeowner. Yes, it is. They they got to be lucky we came into their lives. Okay, one more okay. question, then we're done. All right. Do I purchase the option from the buyer with no money? Uh, Ten dollars or a hundred dollars max. Correct. What do you guys put up? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Okay. Remember, we're dealing with individuals, not realtors, so we don't have to put up any great big fat fee. And the deposit has nothing to do with the deal, guys. The sellers could care less about the deposit. Don't forget that the sellers are motivated to, to get out of their house and are willing to work these terms with us or we won't be talking to them to begin with. The deposit is totally irrelevant. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for attending the webinar. If I didn't get your questions in, we'll try to knock them down and get you an email answer. And I hope you get registered there right now. This is a one-time only event. It's your only chance to do it. 
very inexpensive for you, and we even financed it for you, and we're throwing in Jay's one-day workshop as well. So please join us. Do not let this go by. I'd hate to see you miss it in your competition attendance because this is going to get big, big, big. Um, I mean, it cannot not. This is probably the simplest technique that we've come up with in, in all of my whole career. And I'm telling you that um, you can't be buying and selling houses without uh, having plenty of places to implement this act thing. So, guys, thank you so much for being on this call. Looking forward to spending a couple, three days with you down there in Orlando here shortly. And I got my work cut out to get prepared. And so do you. So, guys. Thank you to Ian and uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, and hopefully in Orlando at the end of the month. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron.